let's start. So what we covered yesterday, we have tested a couple of scenarios and we, we have seen what is kernel port and what is port group and how you can configure the additional switches within the ESXi, okay, and <clears throat> how you can provide high availability for your workloads within the virtual area means how you can assign two different cables for each switch so that if one goes bad another one will help us to access the machines over the customer network or over the source source might be across the globe somewhere a customer is sitting somewhere at the corner okay so these are the things that we covered so far okay uh, also there are a couple of things that we need to understand here okay first thing what is the difference between this switch and this switch i'm saying this is physical switch this is virtual switch so what is the difference between these two anyone Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what is the difference between L2 and L3 switch? Okay. What is the difference between L2 and L3 switch? L2 switch does switching only. This means that uses MAC address to switch the packets from a port to source port to destination port. If they, it therefore maintains a MAC address table so that it can remember which port has which MAC address associated. Okay, L3 also does the switching exactly like L2 switch. L3 means that has an identity from the L3 layer. Practically, this means that L3 switch is capable of having IP address and doing routing as well. Okay, so we'll keep this statements aside. Blindly, you can remember L2 means this is L2 switch. Okay, this is L3 switch, L3 switch, layer 2 switch layer 3 switch layer 2 works on mac to mac layer 2 works on mac to mac data transfer okay and layer 3 works on ip address understood at least remember virtual switches are l2 switches and physical switches are l3 switches Simple and clear. Okay, now I need to understand in which situation L2 will work and in which situation L3 will work in VMware world. Okay, let's understand some scenario. So let me clear this off. I'll try to build one more scenario out of this. So remember the same host I'm talking about. I have one host okay and remember there is one switch okay so l3 means might be one or n means you might imagine multiple switches or you imagine one switch doesn't matter okay two cables connected to two different switches and i have created one more switch right for port groups this is for kernel port so it has two different cables again connected to some
right? Imagine this is not a single switch. It has a multiple switches, but all are connected together. Okay, <clears throat> now I have one more cable and which is connected to my laptop. And this is ESXi host 192.168.30.51. And this kernel port holds this same IP, right? 192.168.30.51. Now, let's imagine I have few virtual machines here. Right? Three different virtual machines, but imagine I have only two port groups. One port group is here, another port group is here. Two different port groups. Now, what I will do, I'll connect this, I'll connect Understood? I don't want to confuse. I guess color coding will help you. Okay, now What is this? VLAN 10. And what is this? The port group name is VLAN 20. Okay. And my or original host is on VLAN 30. That's a different story. Okay. So can we assign some IP addresses to these three machines? Yes, we can. So what I will do, I will assign one IP address. 192, sorry. I don't want to confuse it. Yeah. 192, 168, 10.55, uh, or not. Okay, and for this, what kind of IP we should assign? 192, 168, 10.2.1. Can I assign? Right? Okay. And for this, one ninety two one sixty eight twenty 20.55. Or 50. Fair enough? Three servers, three different IPs. Okay, so scenario is something like this. Let me go to Notepad plus plus from my laptop. If I want to, what is my laptop IP? Sorry. This is my laptop IP, right? From my laptop, from here, ping, sorry, reach to, let me assign some naming as well. Windows, Windows, just to imagine, easily understanding is not actually I will not deploy any Windows or Linux servers, but imagine two Windows server on one Linux server. Okay, so Windows 1, what is IP? 192.168.10.101. If I want to reach to Windows 2, which is 192.168.10.201 right 101 and 201 perfect so can you explain me how the traffic is moving if i want to reach this as well reach to linux one which is 192.168.20.50 
yeah, 20 dot 50. So from my laptop, if I want to reach to these three servers, how the traffic will go? There is no other alternative way. Traffic will go to L3 switch, then go to L2 switch. Okay. Then reach to both. Agree on this. Uh, agree on this statement. Hmm? Yes. Yes. Means simply, if I am trying to reach from here to any of these three, so it should go to L three. Then it should go to L two. Right. Let me write it on something. VSPR standard switch which is L2 okay so first it will reach L3 then it will reach L2 and to the respective destination via the port group okay clear you want me to test this let's test this L2 will not come into picture it will reach it will show you the L3 what is this L3 L3 has a gateways so from my laptop first it should go to gateway and then it should go to respect to server let's try to test this So my V center because this only works in DNS. So there is no other alternative option. I have to log in via domain controller only. <clears throat> or else I need to join my laptop into the same domain controller. Okay, so let me delete one server. What's what we are trying to do here? I'll explain. Okay, done. So minimize this. What I need to do? Let's check switch one kernel port, switch two VLAN ten and twenty. Right, so I have same configuration like this. Okay, now I need to deploy three, two windows and one Linux, remember. So what I will do, I'll simply give the naming, even though they are not actually the windows or Linux machines. I'm windows server one. Next, in which VLAN I need to place this windows server? VLAN 10. Yes. Next. If you come down, network adapter, it is already in VLAN 10 only. So no need to worry. Simply next. Finish. So Windows Server 1 is created. Okay. So let me clone this again. Clone means exactly same copy. It is. It will create exactly same copy. Windows Server 2. Right. VLAN 10 finish and let me create one more clone or else I can simply rename it but I don't want to do that Linux server 1 under this host so this I need to put it on VLAN 20 right so select Browse VLAN 20. 
finish. So I have three servers. So I don't require this web server anymore. This is yesterday scenario testing. So I'll delete from disk. One. Now let me do one thing. Software. VMware, 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 and see. Yeah, a remote management console. Just give me one moment, man. Someone came in. Just give me one moment. Okay, let's resume. So, what I'm doing, I'm installing this remote ma console. The purpose of remote console is the cursor within the web console will not function properly. So let's try to install this. Finish. Now I have three VMs, right? So I have virtual machines. I'll select all or one at a time. Okay, all the machines are powered on. Now, if I want to log in to respective machine, so select the remote console this time. Don't select the web console, select the remote console and see if it, yeah, see, it will automatically launch the remote console which I have installed. So, in this, if you look at the mouse, will work at least something. Somehow, you can manage mouse functionality. So, this is Linux server one. I can launch all the servers at the same time. Hello. This is Windows Server one. Minimize. Windows Server two. Okay. So I have all the three. Minimize this. So let me come to I have three servers right so I'll ping all the three from the from here so ping 192 168 10.101 192.168 10.201 ping 192.168 uh, 20.50 Right, these are the three servers which I want to configure. As of now, I haven't assigned any IP address. That is the reason you are unable to reach them from my laptop. So let's go and assign the IP address. So automatically they started pinging. Go to Linux server. Okay. So what is the IP? 192, 168, 20.50, right? And the gateway, you know, 10.1. Okay, let's see. Strange. 
just a moment. Let's see if it is working. See, this started pinging, right? This started pinging. And for other servers, we're still not getting the output. Let's go ahead and assign the IP address for other servers as well. One ninety two, one sixty eight, Windows Server one ten dot one zero one. Let's move. Finally got it. Let me assign this IP and somehow, yeah, assigned. So close this out. Close this out. Second server started pinging. Right? Let me assign to the third server as well. What happened? Okay. <clears throat> One ninety two. One sixty eight ten dot two zero one. Right. And now google.com yes now it's reaching google.com also now let's see all the three servers are pinging from outside means go to the picture from my laptop it is going to switch from switch it is going to the respective vms okay let's see what I will do, I'll cancel this. Trace out 192, 168, 10.101. Trace out. So it goes to switch. 1.100 is my switch. Obviously, it goes to switch and then it goes to the destination. Same with this as well. And I same this. Right, same, and for this also, it should be the same. Means in all the cases, uh, it is reaching to the L3 switch, then it is going to the destination. You getting my point? There is no other other path. There is no, there is no other path. Now, I want to ping from this to this and this 
means from here I want to ping this machine and this machine. Now tell me how the traffic will travel. Any guesses? First, uh, first uh, that go port group and uh, directly go uh, 10.201 and when we uh, ping from for 20.50 let's go port group then switch el3 and then uh, uh, 20.50 okay any specific reason uh, uh not in uh, same uh, vlan uh, vlan yeah, exactly yes okay so remember vivek listen carefully so if the vm both the vms or on same host and on same VLAN means same port group or same VLAN okay so if a v, both the VMs irrespective it might be a Linux doesn't matter okay so if the both the VMs are on same VLAN or on the same host okay then the traffic flow will be at L2 level only Mac to Mac data transfer will happen okay if the two VMs or on a same host these two vms the blue one and the red one on the same host but they are on a different vlans or different port groups then the traffic will go to l3 and come back like this you understood what i'm saying so can i start pinging from 101 no uh, actually i have a doubt uh, we put a default gateway address as 192.168.10.1. Yes. And uh, uh, well, uh, tracing it out, we got 100.1.1. Uh, right? So, what is the IP for this? 192.168.1.20. What is the gateway for 1.1.series? 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 1.100. Right. For my laptop, gateway is 1.100. You want to see? Go to my laptop and put IP config. What is my gateway? For so my laptop, this is for entry switch now. Yeah. For my laptop, gateway is 1.100. You understand? Okay. We only just uh, for say we have. Uh, Your voice is not audible, man. Your voice is not audible. Your voice is not audible. Hello. Yeah, can you Hello? be a bit louder, please? Uh, am I audible now? Yes. Uh, so me. actually, it is not ten dot one. Uh, just for saying, we uh, uh, wrote there as ten dot one. Actually, no, no, it no, is no, no. Uh, on. one dot one. Hang on, hang on. Ten dot one is also the same gateway. 20.1 is also the same gateway. 1.100 is also the same gateway. The same thing I explained you in the last last video. I mean, uh, last session? No, 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 before the se last session. I guess on uh, okay. Wednesday. Understand the physical networking before you start the learning the VMware networking. Watch that video. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've explained you clearly. All the gateways are configured in a same switch. So, if I'm trying to reach somewhere from my laptop, my laptop will send my laptop's gateway. What is my laptop's gateway? 1.100. Once it reaches here, mm -hmm. it is switches responsibility how it want to send the data. That is the reason. Okay. That is the reason when I said from my laptop, if I'm sending a data to destination, first it sent to my laptop's gateway. Once it reaches there, it is their responsibility to send further. Clear? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Now, the second scenario testing. The second scenario testing is from one of the VM, which is 192.168.10.101 Windows server 1 from windows server 1 if i want to reach to windows server 
Windows Server 2. What is IP? 192.168.10.201. So remember, this will be L2 traffic. If I want to reach to Linux server 1, what is IP? 192.168.20.50. Right? This will be L3 traffic means a request goes to main physical switch and come back you getting my point for the second one Okay, and the what, what else? Reach to laptop 192.168.1.20 from oh, this will be again L3 traffic. It's fair and simple. From here, if I want to reach my laptop, the request will come here and it will come here and it will come here. That means it is passing through L3. So there's no there's no point of discussion here on this, especially, right? But these two, these two I need to test from my Windows Server 1, from one of the VM, which is Windows Server 1 to Windows Server 2. And from Windows Server 1 to Linux Server 1, two pings. So let me go to Windows Server 1. This is like Windows Server 2. So from Windows Server 2, if you look at traffic is going to google.com. Okay, I'll keep this running and Windows Server 1. Strange man, this console is not working properly, but see, we'll try our level best. Okay. So, okay. Ping from Windows Server 1 to whom I need to ping? 192.168.10.201. 201 is Windows Server 2. It's pinging. something just a moment let me go to full screen where is my mouse Somehow I got it. So I don't want to miss this. Let's me to open one more terminal. Ping 192.168.20.50. Right? Now if you look at, I am trying to ping both the machine from server 1. Okay, now tell me out of these two, which traffic is L2 and which traffic is L3? Which traffic is L2 and which traffic is L3? Upper one is L2 and uh, yeah. the down, the lower one is L3. L3. Perfect. So, how to make sure it is not going to the main switch or how to test whether it is going to main switch or not? What is the test? Let's go ahead and do the quick test so i'm say you are saying let me from this it will go like this and 
and again it will come it will go like this correct this is in between these two l3 in between these two l2 agree or disagree l2 means traffic will come here and it will come here that's it so what happened let me do some tweaking if i cut these two cables which traffic should stop this l3 traffic should stop but still these two machines they should communicate with each other over L2. Agree or disagree? Hello? Yeah, hello. Able to understand or not? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they will they will connect. Right? These two should ping and these two should stop. If I disconnect these stop. two cables. Yeah. Right? Yes. So means if I go to this console, if I disconnect the cables, the below one should stop and the above one should keep on going. Right? So sequence number 154, it is keep on counting, right? It is also keep on counting sequence. So what I will do, I will go to this host and disconnect these two cables. How to do that? Let's see. Go to my host. This is my host. Okay. And edit settings. I'll disconnect. First, say first, I'm not sure which one is hardware coding over there. So I'll simply disconnect this. Right now, you see 203, it stopped at 203, and it is still going on 271, 72, 73. You see, stopped at 203. Means, let me show you. Go to host and go to switch outgoing paths are disconnected now you have two machines on vlan 10 these two are communicating over l2 switch okay understood so this is coming and it's going like this and one more thing you're trying to ping one more this is going like this and it's dropped here so it cannot, it should actually go to main switch and come back to this host. But it dropped here itself because it is unable to send the traffic to outside world because I disconnected both the cables. Able to understand or confusion, you want me to explain in a different way? Yes, I understand. Okay, so if I connect it again, 345 see it's keep on going to not three so if i go back and the if i connect the cables once again you should see the traffic is moving again and come on So let me connect all of them. Save and come to here. See sequence 203 and again started at 324. In between 203 and 324, you have a many ping loss because that is disconnected from the network. Clear? On the L2, L3, L3, in which situation L2 will come into picture and in which situation L3 will come into picture. Whenever there is a VLAN change or port group change or inter-VLAN data transfer is required, you can say, then 
traffic will go to main switch whenever there is traffic uh, sorry whenever there is a requirement both the vms are running on the same host on the same vlan then there will be a internal traffic route over l2 over mac2 so and and also imagine for each and every virtual machine you create and attach the network ad adapter virtual network adapter it will randomly generate one unique network adapter id you call it as mac address right so the algorithm is written in a such a way it will generate a unique mac addresses within the within the uh, scope and vCenter also supports around 65,000 uh, MAC addresses, unique MAC addresses for your environment. Clear? Any, yes. any, any questions up to this? Understand the L2 and L3 difference? Yes, yeah. Okay, now I have, I want to create one more port group. VLAN 40. How to do that? If I get a new requirement, I should create a new port group, right? How to create it? Just repeating the yesterday steps once again. So go to the specific host, go to networking, uh, sorry, specific host, configure network switches and add networking port groups. Next, browse existing switch, switch one. Switch 0 is for kernel, so switch 1 is for port groups. Next, VLAN 40, and you mention the VLAN 90 manually. Next, finish. So, you see, it is keep on growing. The switch will keep on growing as long as you add multiple port groups. And all the port groups will send the data via Oh, yeah. cables. These two cables, right? So there is a small topic here. Let's discuss before we close for, for today. Okay. I'm talking about physical switch. I'm talking about physical switch. So let's take this physical switch. What physical switch contains? The ports, right? Right, you have a physical ports. I forgot this. I should have explained this in a first session itself. It's fine, no problem. So now we got this scenario into picture. So we'll discuss this now. Now I have one ESXA server. How many cables I connected? Imagine four NIC cards I have. Right, and I connected these two like this and these two like this, right? So I created one, one switch here, which switch, kernel port. And I created another switch here and, okay. This is by default, no? The current scenario, man. Don't confuse. There is no default or manual or uh, automated configurations. What what we have in our lab, I'm trying to explain it in a different way. Can you see this? Can you see this? The same thing in the picture yeah. presentation I'm representing. You have any confusion here? There is nothing default. It is up to you how you want to design the things. No, why should I use all these things? Can't you use uh, both the here? You, it is up to you. And what I'm saying is best, best practice. Okay. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 40. Right? Now, these two are connected like this. So, what is IP for this? 192, 30.51. Now, I have three VMs. Right? 
I have three VMs connected like this. And I have one kernel port. You know what kind of IPs we can assign. You know the ranges now, right? I'm not going to represent all these things here. Now, I want to understand few things here. So, from my laptop, I'm trying to reach ESXi host. I'm trying to reach ESXi host. Okay, so if I ping ESXi host from my laptop, it goes to switch. So, imagine from my laptop, one cable I have connected here. Agree? So yes. if I reach, if I if I want to reach ESXi host, traffic will come here via this port. It will go to this port and it will go to destination like this. Agree or disagree? Agree. Okay. Now I am trying to ping VM one, which is on VLAN ten. So again, this goes to. We are same switch, and this time it will go Absolutely. like this. Yes. Okay, and I'm trying to reach one more window server which is on VLAN 20. Again, the request came in like this, and it goes to same, but it goes to via same switch via cable 20, and then. VLAN 40. Again, same path. Once it reaches here, it goes like this. Agree or disagree? Agree. Okay. So, now tell me, from this port, from this port, how many VLANs data is passing? Hmm? Hello. That, hello. Speak out, man. At least be interactive. Hello. 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 Yes, yes, I'm able to hear you. My question is from that particular port, how many VLANs data it will allow? Uh, I think that is uh, only dedicated to kernel. Port, no? So that won't uh, route to VLAN. Sorry? Bit louder. Bit louder. It's okay. Even if you say blunder, even if you say blunder mistake, that's fine. Even I'm not the hundred uh, percent perfect in VMware, right? So what I know, that I'm just is, uh, yeah. I think that is dedicated to uh, uh, kernel port. Right? And it will it will only it will only accept it will only accept VLAN 30. Right? It can't it can't send or receive VLAN 40, 50, 10, 20, 200, 290, whatever the VLAN yeah. that you mentioned. Right? So yeah. whenever you see such a requirement, is there any requirement to send VLAN 10 data? VLAN 10 data on this cable? There is no requirement. No. Is there any requirement to send 50 VLAN data? No. Right? Yeah. So in this situation, this port is designed in such a way it should send or receive only one VLAN data, right? It should it should yeah. only only allow go out one VLAN data, which is VLAN thirty. So this port you call it as access port. Access port. I'm sorry. Access port. And imagine in this scenario, from here, how many VLANs data is it is passing? N number of VLANs because it is in this switch, if I have a 200 VLANs, I said you need to create a 200 VLANs here or 200 port groups here. Understood? Yes. Means yes. how many how many VLANs data that this port should allow? This or this? Both. I'm not talking about only one cable. These two should allow 
all the VLANs data, right? So yes, right. Uh, technically, I'll say these two ports as trunk ports. Trunk ports. Okay, trunk port means allowing more than one VLAN data. Simple. In network terminology, network if, if the if you are in a purely network domain or network guy, so you will not use, you will not use trunk port here. You will not use trunk port term. What they will say? You have a switch, and you have one more switch. Okay, you are extending all the VLANs here. If you are extending all the VLANs here, you will connect one cable from this to this. Right, this port and this port you have, you will convert as a trunk port so that how many number of VLANs you have here they will all present here in network terminology. That is different story. So in in VMware for my better understanding, what I'll do if I'm allowing multiple VLANs from one particular port, I'll call that port as a trunk port. If I'm allowing only one one VLAN data, I'll call it as access port. Let me show you. Okay. So 192, 168, 100. Few things I will also forget, man. So just apologies for that because I'll move here and there. This is actually physical terms. I should have completed in the day before a session. Day before yesterday's session. Okay. So I'll say port to VLAN. You'll see all our VLANs are trunk mode. Means if I go to get started, statistics, system summary. These are the ports, but I have one, two, three cables up and running. Means three cables I have connected, rest of them all offline. Right? No destinations or cables are not connected here. Three active. If I go to VLAN to port mapping, I'll say all are trunk mode. All the all the ports, physical ports means you can control each and every port man okay so all are in trunk mode and how many vlans port to vlan membership if i go to port to vlan membership for every for every port i have added all the vlans except the one this is default one administrative and i've, I've left it for only one vlan rest all acceptable t means t means tagged member it will see somewhere. T means tagged member. So VLAN 10 is tagged, 20 is tagged, 30 is tagged, 40, 50, 60, everything is tagged. Administrative VLAN, operational VLAN. I'm not, I'll not go into in detail on the network, network aspects, but remember the basic difference. Why you need these things? Because your VMware should support multiple VLANs or multiple board groups. For that, you need to do certain changes on the physical network as well. Understood? Or any questions up to this? Any questions up to this? All right, so let me stop here.